Good evening. Uh, welcome to the, to the Maison de la Paix and to the Graduate Institute. Uh, I'm Hugo Panitz, I'm a professor here at the Graduate Institute and I'm the director of the Center for Finance and Development. Uh, I'll be very brief. I just want to thank uh, you and you wider for deciding to have uh, its 23rd uh, annual lecture uh, here at the Graduate Institute. And uh, I'm especially excited because the speaker is Santiago Levy. Uh, Santiago has done many things in his career and he will be introduced in a, in a minute, but one of the things that uh, brought me close to Santiago that he was the president for knowledge of, uh, of the Inter-American Development Bank and among the other things he was directing the research department where I worked for a long time. And, uh, and I always consider RES, like we call it, like my second home. So it was, uh, it was great to have Santiago here. So now let me uh, invite uh, Kunal Sen, who is the director of UNO Wider, will uh, introduce uh, Santiago properly. <laughs> Thank you, Hugo, so much for the introduction and also hosting us in, in the, on this wonderful venue. So let me start by saying welcoming you to the wider annual lecture 23. Um, the wider annual lecture is one of our wider's flagship events, um, delivered by an eminent scholar, a policymaker, who's made a significant contribution in developing economics, social sciences, policy, all of that, all of these different, different areas. And uh, the first lecture was given by Douglas C. North in 1997. Since then, the lecture has been delivered by an impressive lineup of scholars at the Santiago and political actors, four of whom have received Nobel Prizes in economics. UNU Wider is part of, of the United Nations University, is based in Helsinki, and we work on informing economic and social, uh, social policies, especially looking at the global south. In this next four years, 2019 to 2023, our research focus will be on transformation, transformation in terms of economies, states, and societies, and how can we transform economic states and societies to try and achieve the SDGs, uh, the Agenda 2030, which is a very important part of the United Nations uh, mission itself. This year's lecture fits perfectly in the research agenda of our, of, our research, of our research program for the next few years. How would states and economies, especially in Latin America, need to transform their social insurance systems, to deliver inclusive economic growth, and to reduce informality, particularly a very important goal in the SDGs, SDG Decent Work, SDG 8, and this lecture really addresses that in a very central, in a very central manner, and that's very really exciting for us. We know that Latin America, and particularly what we see in Chile, there are incredible, there are really significant protests now on social inequality, which reminds us the importance of trying to think about the questions that Santiago is going to talk about later today. So we are very pleased to have Santiago here, and we're very pleased to have our lecture in Geneva. We've chosen this location for many different reasons. One is that we have a fantastic host here, Grad the Graduate Institute of Geneva, but also because we think that arguments we're gonna hear from Santiago tonight are really important in the discussion, the conversations happening, the different institutions that are here in, in Geneva. And we really feel that this particular discussion we'll have tonight is very important, the wider discussion on informality, social protection, inclusive growth, decent work, that's very, and that's very important to UNI Wider's own mission itself. The, we're going to also stream this lecture live. I'll be available to watch online for many months and years to come. And so we're not only going to be having the lecture, we're going to be listening to the lecture here today, but many others are going to watch us over the, in the next uh, couple of hours. I wanted to also thank Hugo Panitza and Jean-Louis Arcon, the Grad Institute, for accepting us today to partner this particular, for the annual lecture. It's really difficult to think of a better partner for this annual lecture, for this topic, for the lecturer, and for us. And we're really happy that, that we could do this together. Now I'm delighted to introduce Santiago Levy, who will deliver the 23rd UNU Wider Annual Lecture. Santiago is a non-resident senior fellow at the Brookings Institute and the president of the Latin American Caribbean Economic Association. From 2008 to 2018, he was the vice president of the Inter-American Development Bank. In 1994 to 2000, he served as Deputy Minister at the Ministry of Finance in Mexico. At the Ministry of Finance, Santiago was the main architect of Progreso Obligades, the, the iconic initial cash transfer program that we have, that we had in Mexico at that time and since, since then. But to understand Santiago's role in Progreso, we need to go back in time. We don't need to go back to 1995, when Mexico was going through a very difficult time. At that time, there was an economic crisis, 
And there was, there was a sharp rise in the number of poor that led to almost an increase in the, a third of the population. In the aftermath of the crisis, the incoming administration of which Santiago was a part was faced with limited capacity to assist the poor. With a sharp economic downturn, there was little room to maneuver to increase social spending. At the same time, most anti-poverty policies in Mexico had considered generalized and targeted food and in-kind subsidies that just reach a fraction of the poor. So Santiago, Santiago became Undersecretary of Finance in 1995, and President Ernest Zedillo put him in the charge of a team that would draft a plan to address extreme poverty. Santiago launched a pilot project with his team in three cities, which consisted of direct monetary transfers instead of the subsidized milk and tortilla programs that were there in Mexico for a very long time previously. But the project succeeded in improving nutrition and the use of health services, it did not involve education, which was seen as a key element in, reduce, in, in building human capital. And Santiago realized a particular problem in that particular, the pilot project itself. He was also concerned with the challenge of reaching the poorest of the poor in Mexico, who are mostly concentrated in rural areas. As a consequence, Progreso was launched in 1997 as a conditional cash transfer program. Progreso was innovative in at least four important respects. First, the program embraced by design a multidimensional approach to poverty. It linked transfers, income transfers, with simultaneous interventions in health, education, and nutrition, placing a strong emphasis on tackling the intergenerational transmission of poverty through human capital investment by education. Second, it was the, the, one of the most distinctive features of Progresso was this emphasis on the rural poor. Third, Progresso followed a clear rule-based system of identification, selection of beneficiaries. So the program was not hostile to discretionary manipulation associated with opportunity political behavior that was often associated with the previous anti-poverty policy programs and policies of, that was in Mexico previously. Fourth, and, and more, perhaps the most important, Progress included an uh, independent impact evaluation protocol that involved the academic research community right from the beginning, both nationally and internationally. That helped not only improving the program's effectiveness over time, but it also made the program legitimate in the eyes of successive governments whenever there was a change of government. And that's why Progress has survived for such a long time. That's a very important anti-poverty program. And thanks to the rigorous impact evaluation methods and impact recognition that we have now seen this year in the Nobel Prize for Development in Economics, the three, the three uh, economists who work in Development Economics, uh, it's a kind of a reflection of that, in my view. Uh, thanks to this, this impact evaluation method that were built into progress right from the start, what we had was a very rich evidence base that, that showed the program had very strong positive effects in reducing multidimensional deprivation and building the human capital of the poor. Progressive's human development approach became a precursor to other conditional cash transfer programs, and country after country, in Latin America and then beyond, became, realized the importance of, of such programs and particularly providing social protection for the poor. Progressive, along with the other iconic Latin America, program Latin America, Bolsa Familia, were the ones that had huge legacy effects. And San Diego was very instrumental in popularizing these programs in the developing world. But then Santiago moved to a different area of research. And in more recent writings, Santiago turned his attention to understanding the poor economic performance of Mexico, in spite, and particularly after the press of Christ in 1994, impressive macroeconomic stability and close integration with the world economy through NAFTA. In his recent book, Under Rewarded Efforts, The Elusive Quest of Prosperity in Mexico, Santiago uses very rich data, meticulously done empirical analysis, to show that different facets of Mexico's policy environment social insurance mechanisms, um, tax policies, contract enforcement led to poor macroeconomic implications, incentives that tax the high productivity formal segment of the economy and subsidize the low productivity informal segment of the economy leading to overall economic, product, economic growth was very slow, particularly because of low productivity growth. Reading this book, I was struck by the fact that much of what Santiago has to say about Mexico's poor economic performance applies so well to other developing countries and including my own country of origin, India. So in his lecture today, Santiago will bring together his earlier interest in social protection and his most recent interest in informality. In his preface to Santiago's book, this most recent book that I mentioned, Danny Roderick of Harvard University says, and I quote, 
When sound economics is combined with a practical, pragmatic bent, it can be a potent force for good. There are very few people who are as good a living embodiment of this as Santiago Levy. We in United Uni Wider would heartily agree with Donny Hattrick. And I'm so pleased to invite Dan, uh, uh, Santiago to help to provide the 23rd Wider Annual Lecture. Santiago, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.